Hello guys, this is me Dr. JK and today we will discuss about pathogenesis of cyst formation. There are three phases regarding pathogenesis of cyst formation. One is cyst initiation, second is the cyst formation and third one is cyst enlargement. So first cyst initiation, bacterial invasion and inflammation of the periapical tissue leads to formation of periapical granuloma, cyst formation, proliferation of the epithelial lining, death of the central cells and formation of a small cavity. You know, there will be a proliferation of the epithelial lining and there will be death at the center of uh, uh, the cyst, uh, the death of the cells at the center of the cyst and it will lead to the formation of small cavity. Cyst enlargement. Initiation is different for each group of cyst, whereas the enlargement process is most likely similar for all epithelium lined cysts with some variations. So, we will discuss about further, uh, you know, cyst enlargement. There are three theories regarding cyst enlargement and they are mural growth theory, osmotic theory and bone resorption theory. We will discuss about these things later on. Okay, First, we will discuss about cyst initiation and formation. Cysts are formed uh, from the you know odontogenic epithelium. The stimulus is not known yet. There are some theories which say that the cell rest of malaises in the periapical periodontal membrane are stimulated by low-grade infection of the non-vital pulp and they will form the arcades at the periphery of the periapical granuloma. They eventually form a confluent layer sealing of the apical foramen and they contain granulation tissues and cell infiltrate liquefies. Well, how does the capsule form? The capsule, uh, capsule is formed by the organization of the adjacent vascular connective tissue. Now we'll discuss about cyst enlargement. Uh, there are three theories regarding cyst enlargement. One is mural growth theory, second is osmotic theory and third one is bone resorption theory. So first we have mural growth theory which is further divided into peripheral cell division and accumulation of cellular contents. There will be you know active division of the epithelial cell lining the cyst in response to any irritating stimulus. Okay? So the cystic lining is uh, you know supported by the content of the cyst and it will lead to resorption of the surrounding bone to accommodate the enlarging cyst. Second is the accumulation of cellular contents. Mural squamous are shed off the lining epithelium and they accumulate there by increasing the cyst volume. Now we will discuss about the osmotic theory. Uh, the accumulation of fluid will lead to the expansion of the cyst wall. You know the mean osmolarity of cystic fluid is uh, 10 millimoles higher than the serum and it will lead to the accumulation of all the shed degenerated cells from the cystic lining. And second thing is you know uh, along with this uh, increase uh, osmolarity of cystic fluid there is inadequate lymphatic drainage and it will favor the accumulation of the fluid from the capsular capillaries thereby aiding the cyst enlargement. This is the uh, osmotic theory of enlargement. Epithelial cell breakdown product will lead to hyperosmolar cystic uh, fluid and it draws in fluid from the surrounding tissue and it will lead to uh, you know, increased hydrostatic pressure. And an increase in hydrostatic pressure is dependent on type of lining its permeability and cystic content cause cystic enlargement. So now we will discuss about the bone resorption theory. Uh, the cystic capsule contains different bone resorbing factors like prostaglandin E2, E3 and leukotrienes. Whereas you know a special thing about keratocyst is that it contains less uh, amount of these prostaglandins E2, E3 and leukotrienes. That is why uh, you know uh, it doesn't uh, lead to the perforation of the cortex and it spreads to the uh, inter uh, you know medullary pathway the pathway of least resistance due to these uh, you know these factors increased internal pressure also causes bone resorption and enlargement of the cyst cavity eggshell crackling on palpation due to micro cracks on the thin uh, out cortical bone okay complete resorption and perforation of the cortical bone occurs on further expansion so further expansion will lead to complete resorption and perforation of the cortical bone Okay, following mechanism are involved in the cyst enlargement. So, in a summary, if we talk about summary of the bone resorption theory, it is increase in the volume of the contents, hyperosmosis, resorption of the surrounding bone when the cyst develops within bone, increase in cyst surface area. This is the pathogenesis of cyst formation. You know, this is the epithelial rest. Uh, the, there is epithelial proliferation and mediated by cytokines. There is, you know, uh, breakdown of central cell, 
and it will lead to lumen formation and then we have uh, you know cystic expansion uh, because of this osmotic gradient it will be hyper osmolar and it will draw the water inside it okay then there will be mature uh, cyst with capsule over here with connective tissue and the lumen over here this is how the cyst will form okay now we'll discuss about cyst regenerate uh, sorry regression you know any any process that may lead to involution of the cyst epithelium like extraction of the tooth or reduction of the intracystic pressure like marsupialization so it will lead to connective tissue capsule to regress and the cavity uh, will be filled by bone and or scar tissue so that's it about the pathogenesis of cyst and cyst regression so hopefully you enjoyed my lecture so if you enjoy my lecture please subscribe to my channel till my further lecture uh, take care and bye bye